pay-per-view. Come for the cake, stay for the big budget PDF analysis. And today we bring you Forget False Nines, it's false number seven time, and Manchester City's worst buy-in result since they spent 17 million on Rocca Santa Cruz. Let's start with Bayern Munich anyway, their 3-1 win at the Etihad on Wednesday, a performance that's left all of Europe agog, especially the Germans. Süddeutsche Zeitung call it their best performance yet under Pep Guardiola. They quote Uli Hoeneß inside saying, I've almost never seen Bayern playing this well. And the paper asks, if this was their acclimatising period under their new manager, just where could they end up? Build, meanwhile, have a go at Joe Hart. They call him the latest in a long line of England calamities that stretches out a long way, unlike Joe himself, of course. Bizarrely, none of the German papers seem to be aware that on another day, Man City could have nicked this, in the words of their own website. Uh, Die Welt, indeed, are reckoning that it was a light watching kids playing piggy in the middle. Uh, that is, with a 116 million pound piggy. The likes of Toure or Mika Richards might work out as nightclub bouncers, sneers the paper, but against a football team, they were helpless. And it's not just Bayern, says Dievel. We have three or four teams that can beat any in Europe. Well, could they beat Arsenal? I wonder. There's inappropriate segue ahoy. These are not just harsh times for the Nepalese and the Emirates, but also for the Napolis at the Emirates. Uh, after Tuesday's visit, which saw them, as Rafa Benitez would put it, well and truly fact. Rafa's cry of pain, the headline on the Corriere dello Sport, with their columnist, Massimo Bazzilli, identifying for us uh, Wenger's tactical masterstroke, the false seven. Oh, I've seen that. From Navarone, yeah? Yep, the false nine is old hat, says Bazzilli. The false seven is the regista laterale, a playmaker who doesn't just lie deep, but lies wide. Mm. He explains, Wenger fielded five central midfielders, inviting Benitez to push his back line up to try and stifle them, only for Ozil, the false seven, to expose them by leading the attacks from the flanks. Oh, all the fusses. Man United had a false number seven all last season. Right, Antonio? Well, meanwhile, other Italian reactions uh, here's Naples' very own Il Mattino, who two weeks ago was so excited about the side, now almost inconsolable. Firstly, uh, for the game itself, they say Arsenal was so superior it was cruel, while Napoli were ill at ease, imprecise and irredeemably inadequate. This was a failure on the international stage for which there is no appeal. Secondly, the paper deeply ashamed of the trouble before the game, which saw a group of Napoli fans attack a local pie shop. Zuri shame in London, as Il Martino puts it, and they raise concerns about upcoming trips for the club to Dortmund and Marseille. What else? Well, Zlatan Ibrahimovic, who scored uh, two for Paris Saint-Germain, has now had more braces than uh, Ronald Gino. And here he is, indeed, with a massive front cover on L'Equipe. Zlatan's not joking anymore, uh, opening up his legs and showing his class in the time-honoured phrase. And uh, big week as well for... Uh, Atletico Madrid, not just the win on Saturday in the Madrid derby, ass hailing that as uh, millionaires nil football won, but then also at Porto in the Champions League. Fine victory that, and now Europe is at their feet, says the uh, uh, notoriously impartial Mundo Atletico. Uh, the other big news then finally from Turkey, of course, Galatasaray. Uh, Galatasaray signing up Roberto Mancini this week, just in time to face Juventus in the Champions League in Turin. Were the Turkish press excited about this one? I think you know the answer to that. Uh, Forza ragazzi, says Fanatic in Italian. Let's go, boys. While Photomac have Mancini in Ottoman garb as a janissary. There he is with his sword, sort of the scimitar Berbatov, if you will. And the headline, attack. Mancini's name is enough to scare our opponents, says the paper. Well, in truth, beforehand, the Italian press didn't seem too worried. Two to sport with, let's boil them alive. But boy, were they and the other Italian papers in for a surprise, as after just one day with Bobby Mank, the Turks emerged transformed, taking the lead in the game through Drogba. Then after you, they went 2-1 up in the final minutes, bouncing straight back from kickoff to snatch a point. And, says Fotomak, it would have been more if that Hungarian ref hadn't snatched our win by giving Juve a penalty. Their headline, Silencer, which is what Didier Drogba did to the crowd at the Juventus Arena. Fanatic, meanwhile, big boss, Drogba and co give Juve a footballing lesson. And while Corriere de la Sport say Juve now it's tough and raise fears that the old lady could be out of the competition by December, according to Fanatic, our Euro dream is still alive. So for once, Turkey's looking forward to Christmas. And on that note, that's where we'll leave the papers for another week. Another batch of Euro stories coming up for you in seven days' time. Do join us then.